welcome back to my channel today we're going to be doing a traditional bolognese sauce um it takes a little while to cook but i'm going to show you all the stuff that i bought to make it and we're going to go through the steps together as you can see here i'm just kind of going through my local grocery store getting a couple of things this morning before i actually started to cook um I found a few things on sale. I'm gonna show you those things next as well. So I did get the things that you see here. We need some sausage, some different meats, some tomatoes. I tried this bread. I really didn't like it. If you ever tasted it before, let me know what you think. Um, got some fresh vegetables, some pasta that was on sale. Um, yeah, that's all I got from the store of the day. So we're gonna start out with, of course, a large pot. Um, I have a cast iron pot here. I think this is a 12 quart pot, so it's pretty big. Um, I am going to turn the heat up to high to start to sear my meat um, first before we actually stew it and let it um, simmer for quite a while today. So these are the meats that I used. Um, I have a beef chuck roast, which I cut into pretty big chunks. Um, I have some sweet Italian sausage, which that's, I have five all together. Um, in the corner there, under my arm, you can see there are chunks of it. Um, those are pork neck bones. Uh, the chunks of sausage are just the three sausages that I cut up um, into three sections a piece. So there's only nine pieces of that all together. But then I took two of them out of the casing, um, as you can see in the smaller bowl there, and I'm gonna break those up and crumble them up with our vegetables. I only use three dry seasonings um, in the sauce. I have a Lowry season salt, ground black pepper, and then dry basil. In the pan, um, which has been on high for a little while here, it's pretty hot. I'm gonna put in some olive oil. You're gonna see it start to smoke. Um, you do need it to be pretty hot. Watch it, though. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is put in those beef chunks. So they have been seasoned and I'm putting them in here. I'm gonna see them for about two minutes or so on each side. My pan is pretty hot. Um, so it's gonna do the trick in two minutes on each side. And so you see one side is browned and the other side is getting pretty brown as well. I'm going to remove them and set them to the side in a bowl I have over to the left there. Then I'm going to put in my sausage. They take even less, maybe a minute and a half um, on each side, we just want to sear the outside just to get some brownness on it. It's definitely gonna have several hours to cook in the sauce. Um, I'm gonna remove those from the oil in the pan. As you can see, my pan got pretty dark on the bottom there, so I'm actually going to scrape some of that out and wash it. Um, so as you can see, I have a little bit left, but that's fine. That's my leftover meat there. I'm gonna put it, my pan back on high. So next in my pot, I'm gonna put my pork neck bones in the meat side down. So they have a meat side and then sort of a neck collarbone side. So you wanna make sure you put the media side down first. Sear that for about two to three minutes and then you can flip them over and sear them a little bit on the bone side. So I flipped them over, they're still up on high. We're gonna sear them a little bit and then turn the pan down on about medium or so and go ahead and get those out of the pot and put them in the bowl over with the other meat. So I have here about three cups of green onions, two carrots, and a bell pepper, which I chopped up prior. Just wanna keep those moving around in the pan, making sure that they don't stick. Um, we're also gonna go ahead and add that loose sausage I removed from the casing and break it up and crumble it as well. I'm just gonna cook this down a little bit, um, soften it some. Um, as I mentioned before, it is going to have lots of time to cook in the sauce when it is simmering, so you don't have to get it too soft. It can be some still some chunks there. So still softening that a little bit, and then I'm going to take all the meat from my bowl that I seared and put it all back into the pot. So everything's back in the pool and ready to go. And we're gonna add our tomatoes. Um, I have a can of 28 ounce whole tomatoes. I'm also gonna use a can of 28 ounce crushed tomatoes. Um, I picked the Kroger brand today because they were on sale for 89 cents. Um, it doesn't really matter. It's tomatoes. We're going to season them the way we want them. So pretty much the same. 
also a 24 ounce jar of Classico traditional sweet basil and tomato sauce. I put a little bit of water in there just to get the extra sauce out. I went ahead and poured that in the pot as well. I'm gonna also put in about two tablespoons of pre-prepared basil pesto. Um, a Maggie cube is gonna go in there as well along with some tomato paste. Um, I used a full six ounce can of that tomato paste, so that went in there as well. Oh, there's a Maggie Q, so that's gonna go in there. The garlic paste is already in there as well, so that's two tablespoons of that. I'm just gonna mix it all up together. Now this has a really long time to cook, so I'm gonna put quite a bit of water. About four cold cups of water is going to go in here. I'm just stirring it around to check the consistency to make sure it is where I want it to be and breaking up some of those whole tomatoes also. Although it's not really necessary, it's gonna cook for so long that they're gonna break up on their own. So when I got all the water in there. Now we do need to put some oregano in. Um, I decided to buy a fresh oregano because it was on sale, it's 99 cents. It was part of the woohoo stuff that was available today at Kroger. So I chopped up about an ounce of that and that's just gonna go directly into the pot. It is raw oregano, but as I mentioned before, we have long time to cook, so no problem with that cooking down and mixing in with the other vegetables and herbs that are already there. And so we're gonna cap it, and it is going to cook for a total of four hours on low. Four, four whole hours on low. <laughs> now about 30 minutes later, I actually opened my pot and went ahead and put about a cup of red wine in. Um, that is actually going to help with the overall flavor and thickness of it as it cooks down. So that goes in as well. If you look at the consistency, it's very soup-like. So it is not like sauce at all right now. It is really watery, but all of that water is going to cook down. So this is my first check. Um, I'm just checking to make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom. That was about an hour. Um, so I am just making sure, as I said, nothing's sticking to the bottom. All the meat is still there. Everything smells really good. This is after about three and a half hours so as you can see if you look at the edge of the pot how much it has gone down from the top almost two inches or so is reduced down now i'm going to add in about a cup of tomato ketchup that adds to the sweetness kind of takes the bite away from that uh, wine and the raw tomatoes because they can be quite acidic so that takes a little bit away from that with the sweetness and the ketchup but we're also going to add about a quarter of a cup of sugar as well. Now that sounds like a lot of sugar, but again, this is a lot of sauce. I made quite a bit of it because it takes a long time to make. And whatever we don't eat today, I will freeze. I am tasting it. You always wanna make sure you go through and taste and check as you're layering flavors into anything. I'm gonna put in some Texas peat hot sauce. Um, if you decide to do this, I would suggest doing Texas peat. Texas peat hot sauce is not really that hot, but it does, it is flavorful. It's not just a pepper sauce. It has like uh, garlic um, and onions and vinegar is in it. So it does contribute to the flavor, not just the heat portion. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt in. Just stirring it up, make sure it's well incorporated. Tasting again. And this time we're good. <laughs> Everything's all good this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those pork neck bones removed from the pot. Um, most of the meat is actually falling off of them. The meat from the beef is broken down, so I didn't even have to chop it up or anything. It is cooked down. We're at the four hour mark at this point in time, so we pretty much have reduced almost by half if you look at the pot. So I'm just checking again. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of basil paste that I got earlier this week on Woohoo. I'm um, just to freshen it up at the very end. I'm just gonna mix that in and we're done with the sauce. Um, I'm gonna mix that well. Again, make sure not to stick it to the bottom. Cap it and close it. I'm tasting it though before I cap it and close it. 
All right, so we're boiling some water for our pasta. You wanna make sure you season your water with lots of salt, a little bit of olive oil so that the pasta does not stick. Um, I'm gonna be using rigatoni. Uh, I got this private select or fr private selection that was on sale for 69 cents a bag when you buy five at Kroger this week. So I went ahead and got five different ones. Cooked it till al dente, about seven to eight minutes it took. Then drain it and put it back in the pot. So I had a little bit of garlic butter left over from the garlic bread that I made. So I went ahead and put that in with my rigatoni. And that's it. I just plated it up for you guys. Sprinkled a little oregano on the top. Um, I made a salad on the side as well as that's my garlic bread there in the back. Um, I hope this video was helpful for you guys and that um, you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, of course, you can always leave me a message below. Um, of course, you want to make sure you like, share, subscribe. Um, try this recipe out. See how you like it. It does take a little bit of time, but most of the time it's just simmering time. It's not really work that you're doing, so you just want to keep an eye out on it. Let me know what you think. Just in case you thought I wasted those neck bones, uh, I didn't. I will be eating those. That is my little treat for making this each time. I appreciate you guys watching me. Again, watch my last vlog. Like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.